Teen Step In is being brought to you by St. Clair Health, expert care from people who care. Hello everyone, we're here at the library um, recording in their wonderful teen lab and I'm back with Maddie uh, who's basically just our, you know, honorary host now. Uh, we are so excited to have Sarah Cooper here as our guest. Sarah is a Women and Children's Services Educator at St. Clair Health. Sarah, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself and your job? Absolutely. Um, so again, my name is Sarah Cooper. I am a wife and mom. I have two kids, both five and eight. And I've been a nurse for, oh, this is a long time, 14 years, <laughs> um, coming up in June. And I've worked in women's health for about um, 11 of those 14 years. So I've started with obstetrics and delivering babies. And I recently took over our community education department last year um, when we had some staff turnover and with getting Zoom up and running and teaching people how to use Zoom. It was really interesting to, to be able to do that. <laughs> and I'm, I'm currently in my master's program for education and leadership as well. So working full time, wife and mother full time, I do a lot. <laughs> yeah, totally a lot of holes. All right, uh, we're going to get into some sort of get to know you fun questions. Um, our first one is, what are you looking forward to doing this summer? So this summer is my, we scheduled our first vacation since my honeymoon 10 years ago. Oh my gosh. So I cannot wait to go back to the beach. I'm really oh, that's so exciting. That. And taking my kids uh, for their first trip to see the ocean, which oh, will be a lot of fun. That's so exciting. What beach? We're going to the Outer Banks. I okay. Think I can't remember. I think we're in Corolla, so it's it'll be really nice. <laughs> it's a good a good way to get back into the vacation groove. <laughs> um, this summer, I am nannying, so that's something to look forward to. And I'm also just looking forward to spending some time outside and doing some reading. And then um, in June, Caroline and I are actually going to Chicago for five days, so I'm excited for that trip. Yeah, I'm looking forward to our trip to Chicago, um, and then I'm going to Florida with my grandparents, uh, so that'll be fun, and I'm um, going to see a few concerts this summer that I'm looking forward to. All right, our next question, Maddie, why don't you take this one? Okay, so our question is, what's one song you've been listening to a lot right now? This was really, really hard for me to answer. Um, I don't know if you get that a lot. Music is part of my soul. That is what I do to relax, right? And blast in the car. Um, so I think right now, I can't really pick out a particular song, but I've li been listening to a lot of uh, Doja Cat. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good answer. Maddie? Um, I've was been listening to these words. <laughs> Um, I have been listening to a lot of, uh, as big of a Taylor Swift fan as I am, I've been listening to a lot of old Kanye. Um, my favorite right now is Homecoming. I feel like it's, um, it's appropriate for, you know, graduating and moving away. <laughs> um, all right. Our last question is, what is your favorite place to shop? Another, well, I guess this was kind of easy because it has to be Target. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And Marshalls. I can't, those are my uh, two places to go when I have downtime. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Target is, Target would probably be my answer too, uh, although it's very dangerous. You go in a list yeah. of like three things and come out with a full cart. It's, um, <laughs> really? Yeah, the kids that I watch in the summer, they love going to Target. And I'm always like, okay, like just you know, ju we're just here for them. And then I'm like dragging them through like the clothing <laughs> section. And, um, but it, yeah, we have fun. So, uh, Maddie? Uh, Target would also probably be my favorite place too. All right. Now, before we jump into the content, we would like to thank St. Clair Health for being our annual sponsor. At St. Clair Health, we're always improving, building on our commitment to face the challenges of today, making an impact on the communities we serve so we can be stronger together. St. Clair Health, expert care from people who care. All right, so to kick off our topic, I, I just realized I didn't introduce our topic. Um, we're here to talk about body image and um, you know how people perceive their own bodies and um, you know working to discuss 
the ideals and norms around them. So to get this conversation kicked off, I think Maddie and I could talk a little bit about uh, the current conversation about body image and body image expectations and norms as a teenager. Um, You know, I think it's really changed a lot. Like, uh, you know, especially my mom, like she, like, I think she wants to help so badly and and she is wonderful, but like, you know, that generation didn't grow up with social media, which I think has been such a huge, has changed the game completely from with, I mean, body image, but really everything. But, um, you know, so I think there's sort of this, uh, you know, influencers and whatnot, they all kind of look one way and, uh, um, you know, they have their, workout and you know when they get sponsorships it's like oh here's a workout program or here's like you know vitamins or a shake tea that's you know whatever it may be so I think there's a lot of expectations that are kind of pushed and then even like amongst friends I feel like you're always posting the pictures you look the best in so it's kind of hard to gauge what's real and what's not online yeah I think also right now there's a really big focus on like fitness and I think obviously fitness is really really important and it's it's important to you know move your body to stay healthy but there's a lot of focus more on fitness to make you look a certain way rather than fitness to feel good and fitness to you know improve your um, overall health and also your mental health uh, but it's just more of a negative experience than a positive one yeah I totally agree I think um you know uh, when you're out and about and on social media you know people seem to think that healthy looks a certain way you know you're skinny or you're you know carrying your body weight well or whatever but I think you can be in shape and be healthy and be fit and not you know necessarily fit that projected image of um you know like actually looking what we perceive to be as fit um you know for one reason or another people might be in a position where they can work out as much as they want and still look the same way or you know uh you know yo-yo diet however they want and still look the same way so I think it's there's this perception that this is you know this is the image of healthy and uh that's the way it is but I think that's all all backwards but you know it's kind of difficult to think about how you're gonna counteract that with just with the way you know we're with the way social media and online it with the way it is you know i definitely agree with that i mean when you look at any kind of social media or any kind of media period from magazines to the newspaper to what you're seeing on tv you you get all of these images that are just it's we're inundated with a lot of information and a lot of pressure from from how your babies are supposed to dress um, when they're, you know, you want everybody to have the, this certain look to to kids that are in kindergarten that are dressing in a more appropriate way to people that are, you know, my age in their 30s and 40s that are, you know, trying to still live up to those expectations of being younger and fit. And, and so it's kind of all around, but I can't even imagine how much pressure that is from being in a high school setting. I, and I think something too about like today is that fashion trends are generally um, designed to fit a certain body type. Like right now, it, sort of the less clothing, the better is really in, you know, crop tops and short skirts and um, short shorts and everything like that. So when you don't look a certain way and when you know the current fashion trends don't really fit your body type that can be really discouraging yeah I think um you know it's it's interesting to see the way uh young like kids are like kids in elementary school are dressing the way I dress now like I think it's interesting to you know see how trends have started to you know, moved younger generations. Right. And I think that's a big part of because these kids have access to apps like TikTok and Instagram at a younger and younger age. You know, when I was in elementary school, I wasn't aware of what people in high school were wearing. And I think that's because I didn't have social media to be, you know, to, to see what was going on. And, 
in these older generations of, you know, teens and 20, like 20 through 30 year olds, um, you know, I was just wearing my sparkly justice shirts and <laughs> going along on my way. But, um, you know, I think this, it's just a perpetual cycle of these trends moving down through the, through the ages and, um, getting, reaching these younger, reaching these younger kids. Yeah. I think that, you know, looking back, you know, as an adult too, I remember there were people that would dress a certain way in high school that that was not me. And it was very hard to not look at those fashions and want them. Mm -hmm. But I was never comfortable in my own skin to wear something like that. Um, you know, maybe the crop tops or the, the short shorts, um, you know, or the, the outlandish outfits. Um, I was always kind of a t-shirt and jeans kind of girl. Um, so, it, but it was very hard to not feel like the popular kid or feel like I was not the popular kid, I guess I should say, um, because of what I was wearing. Yeah. All right, Sarah, our next question for you. Uh, Maddie, why don't you take this one? So how do you educate families about body image? So I'm going to take a note out of a page. So at St. Clair, we have some community education programs, and we have one program, and it's called, um, oh, they changed the name of it to be a little bit more inclusive, and please forgive me. I believe it's uh, it was Mothers and Daughters, and it kind of talks about um, puberty changes and, and body changes and pu dealing with peer pressure. And I want to say it's it's like teens and an adult now. I, I honestly, I, it flew out of my mind. I can't remember what it's called. That's okay. Um, but they offer it. And, and our educator for that program sent me a really nice um, little outline, kind of like a it's called, you're, we are all made imperfectly perfect. So it goes through how different, you know, our face is different even if we cover up one side and how the other side looks like a totally different person. And I do know that TikTok just had like an app where it talked about lining up the different sides of your face and how you look like a different person. Um, so I think that that was really interesting. So just pointing out that nobody is perfect regardless of, you know, how they appear on the outside. Um, so we do have that, and we talk about, I think, putting emphasis on changes in your body and how everybody changes at a different rate um, is really important because, you know, you call people late bloomers because maybe they haven't grown enough yet or how boys tend to be shorter through puberty until they're a little bit older and, and later in teenagehood and how that can really impact your confidence in your body image. Yeah, I think uh, it'd be nice if that was like, you know, mandatory programming that everyone has to go through. But um, I think there, this is a very multifaceted topic. Like it's important that, you know, at home, I think um, there's like a, a, something that like I feel like is you hear a lot is, uh, you know, oh, like. People, when when you eat something like say a scoop of ice cream or something like that, oh I earned this because I did X Y Z today. I think it's important to acknowledge that like you don't have to necessarily earn your food or earn you know um, your food like food is fuel um, you know. So just listen. I think there's this really important aspect of listening to your body and letting it sort of tell you what it needs. I mean, you know, we all have those days where, oh my gosh, I could eat the entire carton of ice cream, but listening to, uh, you know, your hunger cues and whatnot is uh, a big part of this topic. Yeah, I agree with that. I think um, focusing on nutrition and, you know, we all like have foods that we like and we don't like, and I will forever try fish as long as I can, but I can't stand it. And then, you know, they say, oh, you need to eat fish because it has all these good things for you. And, and balance and making sure that you balance out your diet is very important. So you might find something that you like, um, but focusing on not overindulging in things is, is a really good aspect of learning how to know what your body is telling you. And that's the same with um, exercise as well. You know, you don't want to exercise to the point where you're exhausted. Um, it has really great qualities, but if you are exercising 
to where you cannot function any further, that's also dangerous. Yeah, I think that's uh, another thing. Like, I think one thing people don't often fail to realize about exercises that you know the same workout routine or the same even kind of exercise isn't going to work for everyone I think uh, you know I personally grew to hate working out just because I was not doing the right things but I think over the last few years I found things that I love to do like uh, bar and yoga and you know like moving in different ways it's okay if you're not you know running out there training for marathons you can still find a way to move that you like and that makes you feel good because it shouldn't be something that you're dreading it should be something that you do to um you know move to move your body and to stay not only physically fit but also mentally fit all right i'm going to take a pause to thank st Clair health not only for sending sarah our way but also for sponsoring the first season of teens tap in at st Clair health we're always improving building on our commitment to face the challenges of today, making an impact on the communities we serve so we can be stronger together by creating reliable resources that recognize all of our neighbors with access to the highest quality health care, advanced care close to home, and a shared humanity that delivers on our joint vision to create a healthier community for all. St. Clair Health, expert care from people who care. All right. Our next question is um, about improving body image. So sometimes people don't have a positive relationship with their body. I think that's probably more common than having a than having a positive relationship with your body, and it can impact their mental health. Sarah, what would you say are some ways people can improve their relationship with their body? I think some of the ways that we could do that are pointing out the positives that we do like about our body. Um, and pointing them out in each other as well. So you have that positive group of friends. You know, if you have somebody that's really not um, pointing out those great things, oh, maybe you shouldn't wear your hair like that, or I don't like the way that you um, are wearing your outfit today. Um, maybe kind of separating yourself from those kind of people. But pointing, you know, giving people compliments on just small things, I think really helps and it makes you feel good too. And it, you know, oh, I, you know, I can't wear such and such an outfit, but it looks really great on you. Sometimes that can kind of affect our confidence. But if you see somebody that is really confident in what they're wearing, that really gives you the confidence when you're with them. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, you know, figuring out not only what routines are good for you, but what people are good for you can uh, be an important part of you know, loving yourself and being surrounded by people that only uh, f facilitate that love for, you know, being around people that are happy with themselves is better so that you can be happy with yourself um, and just not really people that won't compare themselves to you and that you don't feel the need to compare yourself to. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, everybody definitely has their ups and their downs, but it's hard when you're around people that are constantly negative towards themselves because then that sort of ends up, you know, reflecting on you. Um, you know, if someone's constantly saying, you know, I don't like the way my body looks, well, then you start to wonder, well, you know, should I also not like the way that my body looks? And um, it's definitely important to be around people who, can lift you up and are also, you know, positive with themselves. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, all right, Maddie, do you want to take this next one? Sure. So our, uh, our last question is, what does positive body image look like and how can we all do our part to normalize that all bodies are beautiful? I think, um, as we've talked about, just giving each other, you know, lifting each other up is a really important part of creating a better pot body positive image um, and celebrating that everybody is different. I think that the media is doing a better job being more inclusive about different body sizes, um, at least in the past probably 10 years, um, you know, with, you know, they call them plus size models and we all know that they, <laughs> many of these models are not necessarily in real life plus size. Um, but seeing people with, you um, different statures, different colors um, of skin, different um, abilities, maybe utilizing a wheelchair, See, seeing how celebrated that is and making changes to how accepting, um, especially teens are. I do feel like teens now 
are more aware of inclusivity as opposed to maybe when I was younger and we had a lot more separation. Um, like even schools were not as um, inclusive as they are now, which I think is really, really awesome. Um, and I think normalizing being comfortable in your own skin is, is a difficult task to take upon um, as teens. So a, body, a plus, positive body image, I think it's just having confidence to wear what you'd like to wear um, and maybe not being judgmental of what somebody else is wearing or, you know, hairstyle or makeup or whatever, whatever that should be. Yeah, I agree with um, all of that. But I think the one brand that I cannot commend enough is uh, American Eagle and Airy, actually based in Pittsburgh. But I think that, especially the Airy website has been um, like, you know, they've committed to not retouching their models. And, you know, uh, one thing I like is websites now when you're online shopping will tell you like what size the model is and, you know, what, what height and like whatever, whatever it may be, or, my especially, especially my favorite thing is when you click, if you click on a size, it'll show you a model that's actually wearing, wearing that, that size. Thing. Yeah. Um, I think it's, you know, I think a lot of clothing brands are taking steps in the right direction. I think there's still a lot of work to be done, but I think when you can see yourself in people that are, you know, people, whether it be celebrities or people in movies and TV shows or, you know, influencers, whatever it may be, I think, um, that's even help like um that helps to you know realize that there are people that look like me and there are people that look like me that are you know doing great things and that are pulling these looks off you know whatever it may be um i think it's interesting that you bring that up because like i like a lot of the um, undergarment industry is really taking on different breast size like from one side, what the, your left side to your right side, and how different that is, especially after your body has gone through many changes, or maybe you've had surgery or something like that. And just that inclusivity, I think, is really important on brands. Um, and it does kind of highlight that every body is different, and it's there's nothing wrong with that. At the beginning of the episode, I know we sort of touched upon how um, social media can make um, you know, comparing yourself to others uh, more relevant, but also I think something that's been important with social media is that there is a movement now of like people just coming online and saying, you know, this is me, this is me and my real skin, this is what my body looks like. And then there's a lot of positive feedback along with some negative, but you know, mostly positive people saying, thank you for showing what your body looks like because this is what mine looks like too. And I'm not used to seeing people coming out and, you know, showing their true selves. And it's really nice to just see different body types and how that looks on different people. Um, And that's something that, you know, obviously I wasn't around 50 years ago, but I think 50 years ago with like, um, you know, different movie cultures, you were seeing a certain type of actor, actress. And, you know, now there's just more, variety and diversity in the kind of bodies that are shown online. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, I think all all of these industries are, like I said, taking steps in the right direction, but that's not to say that there's not more work to be done because there is both on, you know, the side of the consumer and the side of the uh, influencer. So I think it'll be, um, I think, you know, we're at a really interesting time right now to see how it changes over the next 10 15, 20 plus years um, to really see how this whole industry of, you know, what, whatever kind of industry is presenting bodies um, to see how that, how it evolves. I think, you know, you've touched on a lot of really great things. And I think as teens, you guys have a unique opportunity to call out things that you see are wrong. Um, I know that there have been aspects where teens have called out a company because they didn't like something that was branded to them or you know why wasn't this um you know all of your models are you know size six or size four 
um, why are there more people that are that look like me? And I think that really teens have really um, influenced how the media has caught on to that and um, and branded themselves to you guys. So I think you're in a powerful position to really influence moving forward how much how much positivity can really be present in the media. I, I totally agree. All right. Well, this was another great episode in the books. Uh, another one that would especially not be possible without St. Clair Health. Uh, thank you so much, Sarah, for your work uh, and what St. Clair Health is doing. So we're going to have you guys listen to this ad really quick. At St. Clair Health, we're always improving, building on our commitment to face the challenges of today, making an impact on the communities we serve so we can be stronger together. St. Clair Health, expert care from people who care. All right. Thank you all of our listeners again for your support. Um, Hopefully everyone's summer is off to a great start. Uh, Enjoying the beautiful weather, getting outside, taking care of you, Um, you know, uh, like, share, whatever it is that you do with these episodes. Um, I feel like we've been gaining some momentum, which is really exciting. So just keep, keep working on that. Outreach is here for you also. Uh, not only this summer, but all, all year round. Um, they have so many great resources from programming to counselors to, you know, whatever it may be, even just going on the website is a wonderful, uh, a wonderful plethora of resources. And St. Clair Health also has great programming for families, teens, uh, any age group. So checking those websites out, um, And I think that's all we have for you guys. Thanks again for listening. And thank you so much, Sarah, for being here with us. Thank you for having me. The views and opinions expressed in the Teens Tap In podcast represent the opinions of the hosts and their guests. The views and opinions expressed by Outreach Teen and Family Services employees, donors, and volunteers are their own and do not necessarily reflect the view of Outreach Teen and Family Services or the show's sponsors. The content here should not be taken as counseling advice. The content here is for informational purposes only, and because each person is unique, please consult your mental health provider or physician for any mental health counseling or other medical questions. The podcast should not be used in any legal capacity whatsoever, including, but not limited to, establishing a standard of care in a legal sense, or as a basis for expert witness testimony. No guarantee is given regarding the accuracy of any statements or opinions made on the podcast. If you find any error in any of the content of the podcast, please contact us at podcasts at outreachteen.org. Outreach Teen and Family Services, its sponsors, donors, and partners expressly disclaim any and all liability or responsibility for any direct, indirect, incidental, special, consequential, or other damages whatsoever arising out of any individual's use of, reference to, reliance on, or inability to use this podcast or the information presented in this podcast. Please go to www.outreachteen.org to see the complete notice and disclaimer for the podcast episodes.